I don't believe it's either or. I do not believe you have to choose between being a mom, a, a, a wife, and being an adventure athlete badass. I do not believe not mutually exclusive. it's not yeah. mutually exclusive. This is the One Day Podcast. My name is Omar Al Majali, and each week I am bringing you some of the most accomplished and inspiring minds of the Middle East and the world to give you a glimpse of their professional life and pull back the curtain a bit on the real and untold story of their success to inspire you and help you learn from those who have walked the walk so you could move one day closer to your own goals. Hope you enjoy this episode. So welcome everyone to another episode of the One Day Podcast. With us today is the incredible Raha Muharrag. Raha is the youngest Arab and first Saudi female to climb Mount Everest and the seven highest peak of each continent. Her journey of mountaineering and appetite for adventure took her all around the world, including to places like Antarctica, Russia, Australia, and more. And Raha represents much more than just female empowerment for the Arab region. Her accomplishments have inspired the youth of our region and especially young girls with big dreams. Her name has made global headlines and today Raha is a female ambassador for a number of global luxury brands, including Burberry, Adidas and others. Welcome, Raha. What a lovely intro. Thank you so much. Thank you. Tislam. Relax. You're welcome. You, it's, it's, a, it's a deserving intro. And by the way, to be honest, there's a lot that, I, that I'm hoping we could unpack during the call today. Sure. When I was reading about your story and journey, I was writing down a million questions. That I wanted to ask Looking because forward honestly, to them. <laughs> <laughs> your journey is incredible. It's rich in self mastery, growth, challenging the status quo. There's a lot of cool themes, honestly, that I want to cover. I'm sure that we're not going to be able to cover all of them, but I'm going to try and squeeze as much as possible. Yalla. Raha, the first question I always like to ask Did you ever think you'd be where you are here one day if someone told you 15 years ago, Raha? You're going to be the youngest Arab female to climb Mount Everest and all the accomplishments that you have done. Would you have believed them? No. Short answer is no. And also, I need to add something that I'm very proud of. I think I'm no longer the youngest. Bravo. I think there's a young girl that went, I think so. Bravo for her. I, I, shame on me. Hey. I can't remember if, uh, who, but someone was, was pointing it out. So yeah, congratulations to her. Um, I, no, I never imagined in a million years would I be able to um, a, live the adventure I've always wanted to live my life as an adventure and B, have a career, have a job, like have a, you know, kind of a, a you know, carve my own kind of special uh, space. Yeah, like it, ah. it, it, doesn't, it didn't exist like this kind of, well, social media has helped a lot and we can talk about that later, but it kind of helped me get into uh, presenting and being, uh, you know, it, TV personality and stuff like that. So no, I never imagined in a million years would my love adv adventure and this crazy thing I have would lead me to this. Never. Amazing. Amazing. And we're going to talk about passion, hopefully down the line, um, because I'm super, I get inspired when people are living their passion and they're aligned with their passion and then add to that, making a career out of it. To be honest, to me, that is like hitting the jackpot. It's very rare and very special to be able to do what you love and be recognized for it. 100%. What did it take for you to get here? If you had to choose one thing, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure there's a bunch of things, but if you had to like boil it down to one thing between you and yourself when you think, like, what did it take for me to get here? What would you say that that thing was? What would you attribute it to? You know, that's actually an easy one for me because I can clearly, clearly see that it's discipline. Clearly. And I, when I mean discipline, I don't mean in the classic sense of discipline. I mean, it's a way of life for me. I, anyone that knows me knows I'm rarely late, rarely late. I'm very punctual. I'm very um, organized, a bit too organized. Yeah. And during the pandemic last year, I, 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 I you know, w one of the best and worst things to do for someone like me, who is an organization freak is have in, too much time in four walls. I reorganized yeah. my entire house, my parents' house. So discipline is deep rooted in everything I do. And I feel a lot of people lack discipline. It also adds to that discipline of your, your, your promises and your words. So when you say you do something, you do it. When you promise not to do it, you don't. Um, and yeah. that's not easy. It's 
a lot of honesty with yourself to be able because you know no one's perfect and I have my fair share of you know baggage so sometimes you need to have discipline to to better yourself and to you know I'm the type of person that gets a bit um someone put it very very nicely they they said that I grew up yeah and I was I grew up you know hitting people with my elbows then yeah. I continue to hit people with my elbows, which is a good and a bad trait. So that's also discipline in yourself to want to improve. Yeah. So the, the yeah. core the core word is is discipline, I have to say. Yeah, nice. I like that. And I love also that you brought up your childhood because I was going to ask you a bit about that. Like I don't want the conversation obviously to be about your childhood, but if you can give me like a high level view as to, you know, give me just cliff notes around your up bringing just so that I can set the context for the conversation. I want to understand how did your childhood mold you, you know, into the person you are today? Oh God, definitely. Like I'm, I'm, I'm the youngest of three. I have an older sister and an older brother. And whenever anyone accuses me of being arrogant or, or Chef Ahali, I laugh because yeah. I'm like, that was beaten out of me when I was six. Like I, I, I don't have a single Chef Ahali bone in my body. And I'm proud to say that because my brother and sister wouldn't let it fly. Like, oh, <laughs> you they are they are both very handsome and, and beautiful and charming and very sharp and very successful. So Mafi Shay is Mushaf at Hal. So I, I laugh when people accuse me, or well, obviously people who don't know me, accuse me because I grew up with two siblings that were very strong personalities. So it, it kind of set me up as well as a you know a good debater because I had to constantly hold my own with two really awesome uh, people. So youngest of three, very close to my parents. Um uh, yeah, I grew up uh, absolutely awkward tomboy, completely not the, not the, the, you know, every group has one. I was not the pretty one in my group. <laughs> I was, I was the no, one. Don't... No, I, I have on. to be You're hard on yourself. As You're hard, really hard teen. on yourself. I, oh, now, yeah. alhamdulillah, it's different. Huh? But as a teen, <laughs> this is a critical part of my upbringing because I promised myself as a 12-year-old girl who looked like a 12-year-old boy that I'm going to be the smart one. So that kind of is, solidified me as wanting to be athletic, well-read, blah, blah, blah. But alhamdulillah, later with everything in life, you know, I, I improved on the look, so I don't look like a boy anymore, thankfully. But I'm just saying my <laughs> upbringing yeah, kind of... You really don't, go on. Kind of. No, but it's important to express that ugly... That yes, no, because it, it, it did you. shape you somehow. I mean, it, it, did, it was a driver me. for you, yeah. Exactly. It shaped me. And when people who really know me know this, like I grew up always being the one that had witty comebacks and wanted to read the encyclopedia and wasn't shame that I can name all of the geeky movies. And do you know what I mean? Like I was, I was never ashamed. So I grew up into an adult that doesn't really care what anyone thinks of me. So that kind of set me up as one of those rebellious people that just wanted to do whatever she wanted to do. Right. So you've always been rebellious and I don't mean that in a bad way, but actually yeah, always. because today you rebel against the stigma, against the stereotype, against the glass ceiling that has been imposed on you by society. You do that through your sports and through your accomplishments. But back then, there was no sport necessarily. So I'm just curious as to, have you always been like that? You know, just pushing the status quo. Oh my God, yeah. I, I was one of those people that my mom used to run after me with skirts because I all I wanted to do was wear <laughs> pants. The brush was the enemy because I refused to brush my hair. Because I'm like, why should I brush my hair? Like, it looked like a kishja. And I'm like, what? why should I brush it? And they're like, because it looks terrible. I'm like, yeah, but it's my hair. Like, I was super rebellious when it was in style to do your eyebrows. I refused to do them. Do you know what I mean? Anything, any single thing that I could rebel against. And it's not just rebelling against my parents. No, it was like rebelling against the norm. The idea, the concept, the, the norm. concept. I hated any kind of uh, box any kind of narrow-minded I hated it I hated it like it was and it was always like that no you have to but why whenever someone says you have to I was always like but why so 100%. it kind of set me up as one of those people that was always pushing the boundaries and wanting and and it it really helped me be comfortable in my own skin because that came in handy later. Again, we're going to discuss social media and it's, you know, pro, it's, you know, two edged blade, but it, it really helps when you grow up with self esteem and accepting that you are the quirky cookie one, like you are the weird one. Haram, my brother and sister sometimes just don't know what to do with me. Like, I, 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 I'm so geeky and they just sometimes, like, we're out in a big group and my brother and sister just like, yeah, she would probably know the name of the third alien in whatever. And it, it's so yeah. funny. <laughs> but um, 
it helps it helps solidify your character as I don't care if you like me or not. Yeah. That's a great, great trait, by the way, like questioning the status quo and always asking why. And and you turned it around. Like, I'm glad. So you were not insecure about the fact that you did not fit that girly, uh, you know, bucket or that girly. Listen, you know, I, you of course most... I have insecurities, of course. Yeah. But I was always like, but why do I have to fit it? Of course, I like everybody. I get my fair share of moments of, oh my God, why? But it made me always want to hold on to my uniqueness, hold on to my my puffy hair and big bushy eyebrows. And like, do you know what I mean? That later became in style. Yeah. Uh, Listen, I mean, hey, I, I completely relate because me as a kid, I was not into sports, to be honest. You know, that was like a big portion of any boy's identity as yeah. a kid. And I just was not into sports. And I was very insecure about that. Not until obviously, you know, you grow up and then I'm, I could care less about that, this, this factor today. But as a kid, it did, you know, it, it does because play with your Because you're a boy and you have to like sports, right? Like because exactly. And it's like the stupid. And people don't see this because it happens on both male and female fronts. It's not just female, like, oh, you're a boy. But as a guy, you're expected to be an athlete. You're expected to be business savvy you're expected to be suave you're expected to be exactly but we're humans we all come in all different shapes and sizes and backgrounds me, and you can't hold a standard and then fault people for not raising up to unrealistic expectations i completely agree with that well you know we can talk about we can talk for hours about just this particular topic um sorry we I, went off topic I, no, this is not off topic. This is perfect. I mean, this is awesome. This, these are the kind of topics I really wanted to touch on. The acts we are on track. Um, but I wanted to go back to that, you know, first moment you decided you wanted to go climbing or mountaineering. I think it was from, from what I read online. It was in Kilimanjaro. Italy, yeah. it, happened right, it happened right after college, you know, and people graduate college and the first thing they want to do is they want to kick off their careers. And no, to sorry, you, you it just was actually, seeking adventure. It, it, yeah, it was actually, I had had a job already. It was actually the first job I had um after university people don't realize but there are critical moments in your life that if you look back in and you have two doors and you could clearly see you standing yes. in front of me. everybody <laughs> has that so that was one one for me it was like okay i moved back to saudi settle down you know literally get married blah blah, blah which, is, <laughs> which is like the most you know typical which not i'm not dissing i'm not dissing yeah. i'm not dissing. yeah yeah no Hey, not at all. I mean, that's, that's their aspiration. That's they their just aspiration. want to start their own life and just, they want to find a husband. They want to be like a, a, a housewife. And that, there's nothing wrong She's with amazing. that. That's what you She's aspire amazing. to. Yeah. And I want that one Even day. Me. Maybe when I'm 90. But anyway. Um, <laughs> well, you never know how these things happen when you least I, expect them. Subtopic of the topic. I don't believe uh, you. it's either or. I do not believe you have to choose between being a mom uh, a wife and being an adventure athlete badass i do yeah, not believe not mutually exclusive. it's not yeah. mutually exclusive so to me when i say that haha i'm 90 it's just me trying to to be like i have so much more to do but i'm not just saying i'm not saying oh you know i have I, of course like everybody dreams and aspirations to end up with the right person and that would be amazing but it was not the right time for me i didn't see it as um the right step because I wanted something else. I wanted something more. And um, I don't know. It just didn't feel right. Yeah, no, I feel you. I'm on that boat personally. I honestly, I'm not ready to settle. I'm so far from like settling in my head. I mean, my brother has just, you know, he recently proposed. My other brother, you know, he, ha <laughs> he has a family and he started. And like some of my friends are pressure, married pressure. and they're starting to plan their kids. And I'm, I'm so like, in my head, I'm like, I'm just... First of all, I don't, I, I'm not pressured. I mean, yes, people are, they keep, they keep asking you like, oh, you're next, you're next. I, I could care less. And I'm so not in that headspace, to be honest. But I agree. It's okay. I mean. It's so okay. To each their own. Like, I don't, I don't get <laughs> why people. So that was, but that was my trigger. That was like, okay, yalla, yeah, yeah, yalla, erjai, dahin, aris, woohoo. And I was like, oh my God, I need to get out of here. I need to escape. Happen. Oh, I don't yeah. want this. So it was really like um, fear. I was so afraid of yeah. getting stuck. Um, and again, my mom always say, says, you know, explain. I'm not against, you know, getting married. I would love to one day, but it didn't feel right to me to quit everything, go and then go from wedding to wedding, waiting for this guy to show up. Do you know what I mean? It, it didn't feel right for me. 
I wanted to continue my life. And then what happened, when it happens, when it meant it will happen. So that's how mountaineering started. Yeah. And actually, when you first decided you, you wanted to embark on this adventure, you wrote a letter to your father. And I want to talk about this letter to your father, because I think this was a big moment in your journey. In your journey. It was like one, it's one of those chapters that it you is. won't ever forget, right? Because you're having this first hard conversation with your father. You're trying to deviate away from the norm. But my question to you is, why did you write a letter versus, you know, call him uh, on the phone? And secondly, how did you structure your letter? Like, what was your selling point in that so, letter? To answer question A, why is it a letter? I called him first. I had initially called him. It was like, you know, like, like it was done. Um, I couldn't sleep. So I was like tossing and turning, tossing. And I'm like, I'm going to just write what's on my mind, which is very strange for me because I'm not a writer. I hate, I hate typing. I hate it's not me, but I just wanted to, to, to calm myself. I was really so frustrated by the situation. Then halfway through, I'm like, this is pretty good. I might, I might as no, well. No, you're good it. with you, you're good with your words. By the way, I was gonna like at some point I'm gonna quote you on some Insta post you posted. You uh-huh. are really great with your word, actually. Your, Thank your you. words. Maybe, maybe I'm more of a storyteller, but I'm not a writer. Mm, you know what I mean? I can't yeah. write to save my life. So it was just one of those like I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this because I hear that when you write it out, it feels better. And it was just a very random exercise. And then halfway through, I was like, hmm, this sounds good. And that's when I was like. <laughs> You know what? I think I'm gonna send it to him, and and it was the you know one of the best decisions I've ever made. Not to be afraid to ask for what you want is a power that many people lose. Yeah, and it felt it must have felt so good when he actually agreed. Oh, it felt blessed. amazing. Nice, and your family's approval it was one thing amongst many things that you were honestly kind of pushing against in terms of stereotypes and cultural stigmas. I mean, you had to overcome and redefine a lot of the societal pressure around us, especially you being like an Arab female, also Saudi female. So which of all these stereotypes or stigmas or pressure, which one of those was the hardest for you to swallow or which one was the hardest for you to overcome? That we're, that we're weak, that we're not capable, that like belittling women. Ah, uh, women. Women are weak. Okay. Women are weak. That they are. In in a a guy and a girl wear a backpack and travel. You're more worried about the girl. Khair. Like, a if you are more worried about the girl, it's because of men's action around the girl, not her. So, mm. do you know what I mean? If you are, you shouldn't be more worried about what. But if you were, it's not because of her. It's because of bad action of other men. So the stigma of negativity that inti inti ka fata inti as a girl, you are weak or you can't or it's more dangerous or 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 bothered me. Nik inti akal or inti matik deri really really core bothered me. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. I can imagine. And and I love your approach in life because you ended up using that pain, that challenge as a driver. Like the fact that you were told you won't be able to achieve anything as if as an Arab woman or as a Saudi woman or, or whatever. Then fast forward a few years, you're up there in the summit as the youngest Arab, you know, f- female to yeah. climb the summit amongst te- like a, a team of males and females. And I want to quote you on something, but and that's what I wanted. I told you I was going to quote you on something. I saw an Insta post that you had online, and I think it's incredible. So I'm just going to read parts of it, like maybe sure. the, the last part, and I want you to, you know, elaborate on it because I think it's very powerful. So you say in it, all I wanted to prove to myself is that I could attempt the impossible and maybe even achieve it. Those windy days above the clouds, I stood shoulder to shoulder with my opposite gender. and equal forever, proving that we are capable of wonders. We just need to be brave enough to to dream them and to a determined heart. Nothing is impossible, even for a Saudi woman to touch the sky. This is insanely cool. It means a lot to me that it it resonated with you because so many people take the story, my story, And they build their own aspirations. And that's exactly why I've become so vocal and so open about it. 
Because I, mm. I always say that not everybody can climb Everest, but everyone has an Everest to climb. It's not about Oof. the mountain. Oof. It's really not nice. about that one, is it? It's not about that specific mountain, right? Everybody has that thing, whether it's the dream job, the dream life, the, the dream family, the dream career, the dream whatever. But people are too afraid to go outside the comfort zone of what 100%. our culture, society set for us. Because we have this huge fear of failure. Because to us, especially in our society, we don't know how to open business. If someone tried to open a business and they failed, you, they, they will never let the person live it down. But what they, what they fail to realize is that this is what it means to want to always try to do something new, to want to always aspire to go beyond what is given to you. So... I would rather attempt something a hundred times and fail than not try it once. And to me, this is what makes the difference between people who, who live extraordinary lives and people that are forgotten in history because every single one of us is born extraordinary. And it's only those who have the courage to actually live that extraordinary life are remembered. 100%. And as you know, and as everyone says, you know, courage is not not feeling the fear, but courage is feeling the fear and, and doing, doing it, it anyways. Anyway. Because you can't just ignore the fear as if it's not there. No, acknowledge it for what it is and, and use it. So, so I, I like that that's your relationship with fear and failure. You take, you take them as an opportunity to challenge yourself, um, which is really cool. Um, and it's not about the summit. I, no. I completely understand that and I resonate with that because I'm sure that it really isn't about the summit. And that's something that, I, that I'm super you know, fascinated with. It's super cliche and everyone talks about it, but it's this idea that- Because it's easily, it's easily uh, recognizable as an achievement, right? Oh, biggest mountain in the world summit, it's easily. But there are so many of these summits that are not, att- are not tangible, whether it's self-peace or whether, whether it's finding love or, or, or having a child or the, people don't, tend to to forget the summits in our lives because it's not as it's it's not as glam you know yes and it honestly it's really not about the summit in a way that you know you all again it's very cliche and you hear all the time and they say that it's not about the destination it's about the journey and uh, because it's so true and i mean i think you are someone who understands this notion to a completely different level because it's really not about you being uh, on top of the summit for, you know, I don't know, a few minutes or an hour. I don't know how long. It, it's about the Raha that has grown so much in the process of prepping for it and to get to there. Exactly. You're not the same person. Exactly. And people don't realize, like, they, so many, okay, because I think I've become the region's rebellious adventure travel, you know, not, I think I've, I've kind of solidified myself. I get messages from people all over the world. The amount of, of ifs and buts and could have is sad. The amount of people saying, oh, I wanted to, but is... Mm, there's always a but. There's always oh a my but. God. And the buts usually self, self-inflicted. self Like it's usually, oh, I wanted to do this, but. And then when you hear that but, and you're like, that's not a but. That's something you put on yourself. And then it's so sad, but so many people put that in front of them and don't I don't know what the word is but they they uh they are their own worst critic and it kind of like yes yeah yeah they don't realize that this butt is a glass ceiling that they're placing on themselves why not I mean why not go for it whatever whatever it is that, that you're trying to attain or achieve what is stopping you the only the only thing that's stopping you is you it's not them it's not their judgment it's not that you know yeah. it's you I mean you already have obstacles already you don't have yeah. to give yourself more obstacles you already have it yeah I want to touch on something you've highlighted in one of your talk, previous talks, and it was that you mentioned that you've got this burden that you feel holding the title of the youngest female Arab to climb Mount Everest and all these titles that you've, the narrative. Well, it's a big responsibility. Been. Why? Tell me, why, why? what's the pressure? Because I feel like you've done, you've done enough inspiration to the region that, I'll give you that, an that should make you feel proud. I'll, I'll give you an example. Okay. Yeah. Gonna, and I'm going to be very, very honest with you right now because yeah. people don't realize this. Yes. Because I'm so recognizable as the first, you know, kind of known athlete in the region. How would it look if when Women's Health approached me a few years ago, 
I would have posed in it, not dressed appropriately. How would have that impacted every single girl that came after me? It would have been a oh. stigma. Um, shufu, 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 she became famous. Hence, she, she's not abiding by, uh, by all means. I'm oh, not judging anyone. You. I'm not judging anyone that does, by the way show up with ever because I don't judge people with what they dress but I'm just trying to give you a small example of the responsibility um, every single time I break a barrier like being in a TV channel or blah 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 I get so much flat I get the brunt of the bullets from the first wave of attacks so that the next generation gets less attacked this is a huge responsibility and, in, and, I, and I, you forfeit a part of your private life whether you like it or not, if you're a public figure, and I hate saying this, but it's true. True. You forfeit true, but, it. Like, and, but and, you shouldn't let that bucket you, or you shouldn't let that narrative restrict you. It doesn't, but I take it as responsibility because I don't want my legacy to be plagued or to be ridiculed in a way that will hinder other women's journeys because if they hang anything on me they're going to be like oh in order for you to get this you would have to lose part of your culture in order to do that and i don't want anyone to criticize this because it's 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 so important to let women have a space that they can be who they are and to express so this is what i feel like it's a big responsibility to always conduct yourself um, because you are, you are, whether you like it or not, I'm a spokesperson for my gender, my nationality, my career, my, you know, whether, whether you like it or not, you carry. Agreed. So that's a, to me, that's a responsibility. Now there are other people that don't give a damn. There are other girls that are in the industry that put trash day in, day out on their social media, trash, absolute trash. And they have young, uh, uh, impressionable followers, and they don't care. They don't care. So to me, if you if you look at my social media, ya haram, ya, I'm I'm constantly like, is this is this information nice? Okay, is this good? Okay, is this like, and and it's because I take it as a responsibility. Of course, I could have been like, okay, I don't care. I could. I respect that a lot. Don't get me wrong. I actually love that. This is amazing, honestly, because you're living up to that you know, to, to this inspirational, you know, figure that you have created. But at some point, I mean, if Raha wants to deviate or pivot or do something different, you should never, ever feel the guilt to do so or to change, to, to no, change paths. At some point, it's you feel, guilt. you know not what I mean? Khalas, this, you've done your, I love that you're continuing to, to do stuff and, and you're expanding on, you know, the definition of you. But I mean, don't, don't let that pressure ever like weigh you down. No, I'm not, honestly, I'm not seeing it as, it's a different kind of pressure. I, I'm always going to be who I am. I'm always going to to stand for what I believe. But I was just trying to explain to you, I feel like, especially women, you have the responsibility if you have a platform because Agreed. you you affect a lot of the young generation. And I take this responsibility to heart. How do, that's amazing. It's a, it's a pain because... in the ass. It's extra headache. <laughs> Salaha. Yeah. But yeah. I take it to heart. With oh, all my that. heart, I do. And that's why you're loved and respected. That's because of this, because Thank of you're you. also disciplined towards, you know, towards this, uh, uh, um, this path. I, I mean, I, I really hope, I really hope because it is a personal sacrifice and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do that, but I really hope by, by not falling into the, the stereotypical silly, really, you know, social media i mean some of them are great but the majority let's be honest the majority are are yeah it's not bs yeah. so yeah. you know we're we're killing the next generation's self belief and and, and self-worth by by showing them you need to be fake you need to look like you know a specific kind of person in order for you to make it in life and i refuse to follow that the that narrative and to feed that narrative yeah, yeah. respect respect to that it's not easy it's not easy at, at all. all at all um a question on productivity and habits that's the question i ask all my guests since we're creatures of habit and you know if you've got the right system the right habit the right ritual the right tools in your life you can enhance performance in every area of your life so i'm curious what is that one tool that one system that helps you become either more productive or more focused at work that, you know whether you're preparing for a mountaineering venture or a talk what is that ritual or that system? It could be a notebook, whatever it is. What is it? Besides being always on time. Yeah. 
because that's like critical for me. I'm a plan person. Like I, I like to plan. I like to make lists. Like I, I like to, you know, have a sit, write down the things. Like I, I, I I'm a planner. So I would, I would and say, do you have like an app for that or do you do it on your notes, like on the phone? Yeah, no, it's on the phone. I like just taking a piece of paper and like, I, I like actual physical things. Sorry, so yeah, um, I'm a planner. Like I like to always plan. I like to always, until I don't want that, until I, I book a trip, I know when it starts and when it's end and I have no idea in between. That's a different kind of like thing I do as well. But I'm a very, like everybody knows this. Everything's organized. Like if you look at my phone, the apps are organized in color. Like if you, if, I'm gonna actually show you a screenshot later. It's hilarious. Oh my god! They're if organized. I show you my phone, you're gonna probably have a heart attack. I can't. Does it have red? No, red. It does. Oh my god! It does. Oh my god. <laughs> that drives me crazy. Um, I know. I'm. I'm sorry. It's okay. Thank god some people are like you that. Ch- but I'm super. <laughs> like if you if you ever see the drawers in my house, like one of the best gifts I ever received was a label maker. If I like to put like. Uh. Yeah, so being organized and being, yeah, being uh, disciplined, organized on, on time. time. Yeah, I think, but, but people really lose this trait, especially Arabs. They put, they chalk it up to culture and they chalk it up to excuses and it's wrong. You should, it is wrong. Be, you should be responsible to, for your time. You should be responsible for your, for your other people's time, especially when you have a meeting. So, so yeah, it's, I find it really uh like an anchor for me and one of my best friends uh her name is maha uh she's like my sister we we have lunch we have lunch all the time this is our thing poor maha whenever we have our lunch date has anxiety because maha is preferably always she's always late poor girl like she's yeah. more and and you know she the one time i think she arrived five minutes before me i had like an issue with my car or something like she took pictures in the restaurant so, so like that's so funny. but i'm it, more of a maha so are you okay no, it's okay you I, can be um, I can be maha. it's okay and i love I'm her not for the best. It, but you try I, I honestly do try and if it's something that is of a professional nature i'm always there but if it's a social event I'm always late. Because trying always. to me, because I, I totally understand haram and I always tell this to Mama, don't panic. Um, what's important to me is trying because this is a trait that some people don't have. And there are people that just don't give a shit. Excuse my French. There's just people that don't care. They're like, uh, I'm, uh, okay, 40 minutes late. I'm sorry, I'm not going to be there. Do you know what I mean? So discipline, discipline, discipline. And I, 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 you know, it's so funny, but yeah, I, I hate being late. Like I used to have a manager called Marwan Shaheen and uh, when I used to work in Labour Net. And if I was like 15, 20, 20 minutes late, he's like, mad at mad. she died. She's dead. She's dead. <laughs> like I was never late. If, if I was late, he's like, ah, she, 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 there's something wrong. Yeah. So <laughs> it's important. Um, and especially in the industry I'm in, like TV and shoots and stuff, they will judge you and your nationality Based, oh, yeah. yes, because in Tikhalijia already there's a stigma. Ehna, we're not on time. Arab, Arab standard time. Yeah. Arab standard time. And then when I, you have me, like you know, made in Germany, I show up six to five minutes early or ten minutes early <laughs> if I if I'm in the mood, and everyone's like, what? "That's great." Oh yeah, I'm That's super. Great. Yeah, super. Uh, but not everyone ha- has it here. Trust me. So, th- and time is a resource, as you said. Like, uh, you should you shouldn't disrespect that. Don't get me wrong. I have days where I'm just like absolute yeah. couch potato, like binging. Like, I, I have days like that too. But those yeah. are days you us. you are you earn you earn days yeah. of sitting down being lazy. But oh yeah, it it shouldn't be the norm. And like into arbash insa like. I always say that make the days that are are slow and long the ones you can count, not the other way around. I agree. I agree. This is uh, a whole different topic, but sometimes we're 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 running, 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 and I'm someone who, if I'm chilling at home, I'm always guilty about chilling. And no. I'm trying to change that. I'm trying to change that because I'm always I always feel like I have to be doing something. But honestly, sometimes. You got to check in with your body. You got to check yeah. in with your state, your headspace. If you're not feeling it, just don't do it. That's another thing, honestly, I'm really good at is that uh, I, I I never feel guilty to just sitting down and like binge something or or Even having me. eight or nine hours of sleep. Someone once told me, uh, why don't you wake up early? 
And mind you, I wake up at like 7.38, okay, when I'm not working. And to me, I think that's completely normal. Like if you want, if you want to wake up at 8.00, that's fine. And then I, I'm like, why, why would I, why would I, why, why would I, you know, if, if I can, why, why can't I sleep in? Like, I don't, I don't get it. it. You don't have to feel guilty. You don't have to be, you know, I have to just make a good, like give your body its, nah, it's due. Yeah. Yeah. During my weeks, Anna, I wake up at 5.30 just to work out and I have my morning routine. Oh my but God, on the you're weekends, one of those people. I'm one of those people. I'm one of those people. <laughs> but listen, I'm so used to it now that I can't even w- imagine working out in the what evening. What time do you sleep? I sleep at 10.45. Like I have, a, I have kind of a ritual. I meditate before I go to bed. Like I give it 20 minutes. So I think 10.30, I belish to wind down my day. You know, خلاص, you know, shy away from all devices. Okay, good. Then by 11, so I'm, I'm in bed. Okay. Yeah. One last question before we... We, we conclude it with the three rapid fire questions. And this question is, is, is around purpose. And I, I, I heard in one of your interviews, you said something that resonated with me big time. You mentioned that when you first visited the first mount, I think it was Kilimanjaro or whatever, and you saw the summit, you knew that climbing the summit was a purpose and that this, this calling came from a deeper, deeper, different place, a different dimension. I don't know what was the word that you used, but... Do you believe that, and you mentioned it earlier during our conversation, but do you believe that we all have a purpose and a calling? Yeah. Like we, need, we need to listen closely to that deep place. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Honestly, I, I okay. So, because this, this might make people, okay, so not everybody has the same kind of compass. Not all of us have the sense of, what am I here for? Some people are very content and happy in just going about their life. And that's maybe their purpose. Like let's not belittle also those people yes. who don't Even have me. who don't have that killer drive like us, right? But I truly believe in this beautiful life, there are these moments that you can definitely let go go through a life without, but they make it just so much more beautiful. Like it's like having, I always say this, it's like having a, a, a painting and only using one color or, mm. or, or reading a book and only reading the first chapter. Like, it's the same thing. You can still have an idea of what you can still have an idea of the painting, you still have an idea of the book, but you won't deeply feel it. So I truly believe that every one of us has this thing, but not everybody finds it. Not everybody um, listens. Not everybody has the the you know the drive to find it the drive the urge to find the it urge also also this stubbornness i guess you need a certain kind of like you know a, a, a tad a, you know a pinch of madness and stubbornness in, in order for yeah. you to to go and and the history is littered with these people who were crazy and mad like imagine the first person who wanted to fly the first person who wanted to go to the moon the first, all of these people we're uh, we're not the norm so it's okay it's okay to be different it's okay it's okay to be out of the norm but what isn't yeah. okay to me is to be to be boring like someone once asked me what's the most thing you're scared of in life and i told them boredom and mm. the guy didn't get that that get the joke i'm like yeah boredom is the thing i that scares me the most yeah me too not boredom but complacency yeah, like complacency. Yeah, stagnation. It's, it's, it's a form. It's a form of of being. It's a form of boredom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just like, just living life, just Mundane. watching life pass by. Mundaneness. Just being like, okay, yeah, okay. Wake up, eat, make food. You know, make money, sleep. Like, and if that's what you are happy with, genuinely happy with, it and content with, uh, chapeau. Like, yeah, good for you. Go Leave on, me, like, yeah. But if you feel like something is missing then that missing piece needs to be discovered and it's not going to be under your coffee table. It needs to be yes. hunted. I agree. I love, I love the, the word hunted because it is a hunt. Yeah, it I'm is dead. definitely a hunt. Like, you know, it is a hunt. you, you can't people, just sit it really there. Is. Yeah, it, it's not going to fall on your lap. Like, uh, unless no. you're super, super, super lucky and then the right place, right time kind of moment. Yeah, it can happen. But the majority of people feel that urge and feel that emptiness and don't listen to it. Yeah, I agree. Amazing. Oh, we can go on for <laughs> hours about some of these topics that we're talking about, but we're coming to the end of the conversation. Unfortunately, relax in respect of your time, speaking of time. No worries. Uh, Happy to answer um, as much as you want. 
Thank you, Max. I'm telling you, there might be a part two sometime Anytime. in the future. But for us to wrap this up, I have three rapid fire questions for you. Just don't think, overthink them. Just tell me what's the first thing that comes uh, to your mind. I hate those. Okay. When, <laughs> when uh, you hear the question. So the first one is, what piece of advice would you give your younger self? Never be afraid of failing. Uh, wear sunblock. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> wait, why, why, why wear sunblock? Because, you know, it helps you not age. So wear sunblock. Oh, okay. okay. And start <laughs> earlier. Okay, nice. That's cool. Uh, second question is, what is the one tip or one hack that you would give a person out there who's trying to achieve a dream, achieve a passion, um, even if it can get them one day closer to that thing? What is that hack or tip or tool that you would suggest? Start. Whatever it is, start. Whatever whatever idea it is, build on it. Don't put in a drawer and expect it to, to grow on its own. Like everything in yeah. life, it needs to be nurtured. It needs to be fed. So whatever it is, and even if you do fail, it might lead you to something else. Leave me momentum, 100%. Momentum. Move, move. As long as you're moving, you know, there's hope. I agree. The final question is, what is, what is it that... Raha wishes to accomplish one day and you could start the sentence with one day I would like to or one day I would wish to go to the go to space <laughs> oh really yeah oh ah, that's so cool yeah one day I would like nice. to go to space I think I will one day with everything that's happening oh you will I might will. be like 60 by the time I save enough for it to get there but uh if, you know. I mean, hey, you're like highest peak, uh, highest peak of every continent <laughs> on Earth. Check. I just need, to, I need to find the highest peak on Mars. You never know. I want I, I don't mind, uh, you know, uh, Olympus uh, Mount, the Olympus Mountains uh, in, in on the moon. But um, yeah. you know, I, I'm one of those people that every time there's like, would you like to go to the moon? Apply, apply. I'm one of those people that applies to everything. <laughs> hey, we're hey, we're very close to it. We are I, do, I think, to. you know, the next, yeah, next decade, uh, it's going to be a thing. So I, I'm very hopeful. And if anyone's listening or Mr. Branson or any of these, you know, rich, smart guys, yeah, which, like which, reach which, out to Raha. you know, would you like someone to come with you? I'll, 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 <laughs> I'll, I'll be la- very, very pleasant. <laughs> and where can people follow you or follow your work? Uh, Instagram is the best, to be honest. Uh, I am I, very responsive. Uh, I apologize for my spelling mistakes. I'm notoriously a bad speller, but uh, but yeah, I, I answer everything myself, and I and I really like to to hear from everybody who, who you know has the same kind of passions or went wants to go through what I've been through. So consider me like that crazy sister or cousin that's always doing crazy things, and I'm happy to help. Nice, and it's Raha Muharrag. Um, yes, it, very, uh, very creative, huh? Raha Muharrag, very creative. Raha Muharrag. There's no dot, nothing. Just nope. Raha Muharrag. Raha Muharrag. You know, I, I, in the beginning when I first started social media, everybody was like, "Futu al batutu, madri shukri, madri ish," and I'm like, eh, "No." So I just no. Raha Muharrag. I'm sticking to my first name and my last name. Yeah, yeah. I'm just sticking. You know, you know what? That's a pretty good name, and I just yeah. it stuck. Amazing. Ra, thank you so much for your time and for the incredible value and inspiration that you brought today. Honestly, did not expect anything less. This was really, really, really cool. You're most welcome. I hope you enjoyed this episode and that you were able to pick up a thing or two that could help you in business or life. If you would like to hear more conversations like these and you're not yet a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe through your preferred podcast platform and follow us on Instagram at one day dot the podcast and you could reach me on my personal instagram account at o al majali and last but not least if you prefer to watch the full episode on video then you can do so on our youtube channel one day the podcast till next time